My name is Jeroen Koha, and uh, in 2005 we traveled to Brazil to shoot a video uh, documentary about hip hop in the slums of Rio and Sao Paulo. So we interviewed um, these rappers and we made a video clip and we were really interested in what they had to say and appalled by what they were talking about. So we noted that there was a huge difference in, in, uh, between what people inside favelas, which is slums, uh, were saying and what people outside favelas were saying. So the rappers were talking about uh, trying to bring over this positive message of uh, having pride in your community, self-esteem, but the media was different. So people outside favelas were very afraid of what was going on in favelas. They thought it was a war zone and that people were very scary and criminal. So we sat down and we thought, like, what can we do? We, 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 we want to do something. And we came up with this weird idea, like, what would happen if we would actually paint these favelas? So we thought, if you would paint a whole favela, could you some somehow change the perception that the outside world has of these places and start up a sort of new communication? So we started making like sketches, like you see here, with color. Then we made sketches with different designs, with rays and stuff like that. Yeah, and um, so we figured, what, what, ha what, would, what would we do? Should we just go to Rio and start? So we went back to Rio and uh, we, we wanted to try and figure this thing out. Yeah, we got a small grant from the Dutch government to do research. So we went to Brazil and we had a friend who actually had a social center in this particular slum called Villa Cruzeiro, which is one of the most notorious slums in Rio. He said, basically, if you guys want to start painting here, if you can do this in this place, you can do it anywhere. So um, normally people in Brazil knew Villa Cruzeiro just of uh, magazines, of newspapers, where basically every day there would be terrible news. About there was a huge war going on between the drug gang over there and the, and the police force. So we thought we can do an experiment or research or whatever, but it would actually work if we just started painting. So we found these three houses that were basically in the center of the favela uh, next to the football field, which is the most important, uh, soccer field, excuse me, most, imp <laughs> most obviously the most important part of the, of the community. Yeah, so we started talking to people there, asking them questions, what do they think is important, and we came up with various different designs. And so, yeah, this design was a um, design that Jeroen made of a, um, a little boy playing with a kite. And next to soccer, kite running is one of the most important sports or pastimes in Rio. So everybody loved this design, and we decided to go with it. So we figured, let's, let's paint the whole thing blue first. Yeah, which was, we thought was amazing, it just looked cool. Yeah, and it reminded us of this uh, artwork, which is actually around the corner from his house in Rotterdam. Uh, it's artwork by Florentijn Hoffman, a Dutch artist. We thought it was really cool, but the guys in Brazil thought it reminded them more of the police stations or the inside of prison cells. So, <laughs> so the, actually the, the woman living in the house said, do something because we're afraid that they're going to start shooting at our house. Yeah, so we had to change that. Here you see one of the painters. We started employing people from the local community to paint with us, and we taught them to paint, and we gave them a job to work with us. So here you see our friend Mauro. He's setting up the grid system so he can make a small drawing into a big drawing, as you can see here. So this is the result. It took a while because it was difficult, and we, didn't, we hadn't done this type of stuff before, but um, we thought this was a really beautiful result. But the people in Brazil thought a bit different yeah, about Yeah, so it. this, like this kid said, he's flying a kite. The boy's flying, where's the kite? We thought it was symbolic enough, but no, we needed a kite. So <laughs> we actually, we saw this house, which didn't happen to be a police station, but it was blue, so it sort of, there was some sort of color connection. So we figured, okay, well, let's get a local metal worker to make a big kite for us. We've, we've got this guy. Yeah, and we went up the hill there, and we installed it, and finally our kite runner had a kite. Unfortunately, and, oh sorry. Yeah. Uh, your turn. <laughs> so thank you, Dre. Unfortunately, the, <laughs> the 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 our kid got shot in the head. Um, there was a lot of there's a lot of war. There was a lot of warfare going on, and and uh, he had got hit by a stray bullet. Yeah, which is I mean very grim because he was basically a symbol for all the kids that are there, and this is very symbolic, so that, uh, telling that all the kids have the chance of being hit by stray bullets. Yeah, but nonetheless, uh, we got some press, and people st started speaking positively about this notorious slum, 
And so we, are, we were starting to reach that goal of starting a new discussion about what was happening. So we went back to Holland and we thought this actually works, we need to investigate this more and we need to continue. So we organized a fundraiser, we organized an auction in order to get some money to get back to Brazil. Yes, in 2008 we went back to uh, uh, Villa Cruzeiro, that same neighborhood, and they had built this wonderfully new big construction which looked like a river of concrete to us. Yeah, it was, uh, it's basically a street that is reinforced with concrete to make sure it's safe during mudslides. But to us, it looked like a river, and we thought, hey, we should paint a river on this. This was a new surface for us to paint on, so we very quickly made a sketch with some carp and a river, and we thought this was, hey, this is a good idea. We should get somebody to help us with the design, because we haven't been drawing rivers all this time. So we called my tattooist, who basically knows how to make designs on round surfaces, <laughs> and who knows a lot about koi carp. Uh, which is Rob Admiral, and he came down to Brazil with uh, two weeks, and he stayed with us, and he drew out the first lines. So, so we started drawing, and all the kids thought it was wonderful, because Rob Admiral looks like Santa Claus. Yeah, the rest of the street, though, thought that we were making a mess out of it, and they said, our street was ugly before, but you guys are making it even uglier. So there's so. all these weird, white, drippy lines, and people were really thinking, because we didn't really have a design on paper, we designed it on the spot, on the concrete. So. Uh, People thought that was just strange. But we have a video now that will show how it gets a little better. So, so. here you see um, one of our painters, Robinho. Um, we had three of these guys, they worked with us for eight months. It was quite a painstaking time because there was scorching sun. Yeah, we, we got, got very sunburned. We got extremely sunburned, it was crazy. And, um, but worse than that, police shot at us at times. And it was, it was quite a... Yeah, it was quite a weird experience as there was a huge war going on between the police and the drug gang, which is actually visible in the next film. Peter? If we could please switch to the next film. Great. Thank you. So this is actually the landlord of my house. I lived in this building for eight months. So you can imagine it was quite a disturbing time. So we didn't time. have to uh, watch Die Hard to hear some heavy gunfire. <laughs> but, um, Could we go back to the slides, please? All right, so luckily there's this guy who, after uh, hours of gun battle, he makes his rounds, and his job is to actually fill the holes in the holes, like every street, he just goes from wall to wall. Interesting job. So then the, the, we had a big party when after the eight months the painting was finished, and uh, we invited a lot of people from different parts of the city. Our, even our parents came around. Yeah, we had some famous Brazilian people that we actually didn't know, but they were famous, <laughs> who, per who, per who performed at our opening, which was a lot of fun. Well, it was special that people actually came to the favela for the first time, even though before they would all be too afraid to go. So this is the, the, the end product after eight months of painting about 20,000 square foot of carp and water. So basically this pulled a lot of people to Villa Cruzeiro and pulled a lot of people from other places to come and visit Villa Cruzeiro, but most importantly, it gained, it, it, it pulled a lot of uh, media attention in Brazil, which you can see in the following film. No Rio, uma dupla de holandeses usa a arte para desenvolver autoestima aos moradores da violenta favela da Vila Cruzeiro. Essa comunidade também precisa de um de um reputação melhor. Dá orgulho. Orgulhoso. Agora a gente olha para as pessoas chama até a gente de artista. Todo este trabalho, uma verdadeira obra de arte a céu aberto, levou oito meses para ficar pronto. If we can go back to the slides. So we went back to Holland after this, after all the commotion and. Uh, in some nice, in our own homes, we thought of new plans, how we wanted to paint this whole favela, because this was still our dream. Yeah, so we made sketches, and we made models. We even made our own machines to make models with. 
and it's actually with a guitar string, I remember. We made that <laughs> foam cutter. And then, uh, so we had all these techniques to figure out what can you do with these random houses and how could you project Im images onto that. And we have uh, a little video of that too. So this video basically shows what happens if you put all these like um, different colors, different lines on a three-dimensional structure. So what happens if you change your viewpoint? This is something we experimented with. We can go back to the slides. So yeah, this is one more in the model. And then in 2010, we went back to Rio again to see if we could live our dream of painting this whole favela. And this time we uh, had a chance to team up with a paint company who had the same idea basically for them to sell more paint. So. So the idea was to paint this whole favela, starting in, at the square, the center square, basically the entrance of the favela, and Jeroen made this design. So the previous designs and the models came back in this design for this real painting now, which is just basically a design of optimism and colors radiating and projecting the pride that people in the favela really have. And here we have an architectural drawing of the same thing, so all the the 30 painters that we were working with would know exactly what to paint. Who are in the next video. So here you see uh, the classroom. It's actually the Samba School, which we painted as well. And we had 30 kids that worked with us. And the idea was basically for us to make a design that we didn't have to paint ourselves anymore, but we could just tell people, like either 10 people or 100 people, so, you know, just to up production. So actually this painting, although it was maybe 10 times bigger than the ones we made before, we made in only a month. And the cool thing about it being made by the people that actually live there is that it's their painting and they have ownership over that painting. It's not ours, it's their, they transformed their neighborhood. So that's something that is really important for us. So yeah, this was a success. So we had a lot of media attention with this. Uh, again, for us, that it is a measure of success because that means that positive things are being say, said about these previously bad neighborhoods. And um, uh, regrettably, the paint company decided that this wasn't an effective means for them to sell paint, so they stopped this. And we didn't paint the rest of the favela with them. But. So yeah, we still uh, continue our dream. So we continue making all these like designs. We were actually invited to go to New York to have an exhibition at Storefront for Art and Architecture, which we were very proud of. And that for us was somehow a leap to the United States. And now, uh, so, so in, in the Storefront for Architecture exhibition, we had some designs that I made, for instance, for the Lower East Side projects in, uh, in Manhattan and some other different locations. And as a result, we were asked by the Mural Arts Program here in Philadelphia to come and do several different projects over here, which is why we're living about four blocks from here right now. Yeah, so now we're actually Philadelphians. Uh, this is our house. Yeah, we the live. The house on the left is our house. We live in that little white house. It's between an area they call Beirut and an area they call the Badlands. <laughs> It's not too far away from here. We're going to be working for the next year and a half on three big projects, uh, one in Maniunk, one in Center City, but the main one is going to be in North Philadelphia on the stretch of Commercial Avenue on uh, Germantown. It's a video we have of that. And uh, that's basically it. Thanks a lot. Thanks yeah. for having us. <laughs>